If your child struggles with ADHD-related focus, concentration, and behavior challenges, then the first few months of school is often the toughest time for your family by far. It's harder for a child with an ADHD brain to establish good routines and habits for day-to-day things like studying, getting homework done and tuned it, turned in, uh, falling asleep, and staying on task. So as the weeks pile up and we start to get into the thick of the school year here, things can really start to get tough with poor grades, behavior problems, and more. Now, add in the onslaught of Halloween candy and all the holiday parties and treats coming up in the next two months, and this is the time of year when ADHD challenges can really be the hardest. This video is for parents who want their ADHD child to absolutely thrive and overcome these challenges in a different, better way this school year by tapping into the natural, drug-free ADHD solutions and options that we'll break down in this video. You'll learn about how ADHD kids end up constantly stuck on the gas pedal neurologically, leading to nonstop fight or flight sympathetic dominance, hyperactivity, impulsivity, trouble focusing, and sleeping with problems. But even more importantly, you'll learn how to finally get your raging bull gas pedal stuck on kiddo to calm down, better focus, and better regulate by tapping into their brake pedal and something called the vagus nerve. We'll get a little extra nerdy here and neurological in this video, but we'll also keep it really simple and straightforward so that you can finally learn how to help your ADHD child without the use of heavy hitting side effect lace medications. I want to start with a story of Braulio. Before he found a PX doc, Braulio was stuck in a storm of stress. His nervous system was so dysregulated that he was dealing with anxiety, difficulty focusing, ADHD tendencies, emotional regulation challenges, and motor tics. They put a lot of time and effort into other routes of care, like cognitive behavioral therapy and talk therapy, but unfortunately didn't see much change. Mom said that all of these were overwhelming to him and hard to keep up, and the therapies really made him feel like a bad kid. But anyone who knows Braulio knows that he is the complete opposite. He's a smart young man full of kindness and potential, and he just needed to help calming and regulating his nervous system so that he could be himself. Mom said that after the first month of care, his tics and hand flapping or sensory seeking stopped completely. And towards the end of the care plan, he was so much better at self-regulating and focusing. He was more flexible, self-motivated, and able to make goals and self-direct. How much more could you ask for? What does his life look like now? Well, for the first time, he is able to start hobbies and see them through, like baseball and volunteering. He's so much more focused, and he even made the honor roll. Mom says he's looking forward to his continued growth and goal setting, and so are we. So there are five different ways that ADHD can have a significant and negative impact on a child's performance in school. Let's go through some of the symptoms and challenges first. First, number one, we want to discuss the difficulty of focusing and sustaining attention. Children with ADHD often struggle with maintaining focus and attention on tasks, including schoolwork and other things as well. An overactive sympathetic nervous system can exacerbate this issue, leading to increased distractibility. In a classroom setting, they may find it challenging to concentrate on lessons, leading to missed instructions and difficulty completing assignments. Number two, there's a big impulsivity and impaired decision-making factor. Sympathetic dominance can contribute to impulsive behavior. Children with ADHD may act on their impulses without considering the consequences. And in a school environment, this can manifest as speaking out of turn, disruptive behavior, or difficulty following classroom rules, all of which can hinder their learning and disrupt the learning experience of others. The third thing is restlessness and hyperactivity. 
Some children with ADHD exhibit hyperactivity, which can be exacerbated by an overactive sympathetic nervous system. They may have difficulty sitting still for extended periods, leading to restlessness and fidgeting in the classroom. This restless behavior can make it challenging for them to engage in quiet, focused tasks, such as reading or taking tests. The fourth symptom we usually see is poor time management and organization. So children with ADHD often struggle with time management and organizational skills. An overactive sympathetic nervous system can make it even harder for them to plan, prioritize, and complete tasks within set time frames. This can result in missed deadlines, forgotten assignments, and a sense of frustration and inadequacy in school. And as kids go through school and increase into the next grade level, those tasks and demands just become harder and harder. We see generally in kindergarten and third grade, these tasks really increase. And so those struggles become way more apparent at those age levels, but they can manifest at any age. The fifth symptom that we see is emotional dysregulation. An overactive sympathetic nervous system can contribute to emotional dysregulation, including heightened stress responses. Children with ADHD may be more prone to frustration, anxiety, and mood swings. In a school setting, these emotional challenges can lead to difficulties in managing frustration or handling peer interactions, potentially leading to behavioral problems or social difficulties. Now let's talk through some of the causes, neurology, and how chiropractic connects to all of this. I told you this was going to be nerdy, but I promise we'll keep it simple. So each different challenge is caused by the same thing. The most frustrating thing about ADHD is that it causes such a multitude of challenges in day-to-day -day life, most especially at school. But in the same breath, what is actually good news that we often get to share with parents is this. It's all caused by the same thing, an overactive and excessively stimulated sympathetic fight or flight side of the nervous system. When this stuck on sympathetic drive gas pedal and not being able to activate that brake pedal with the vagus nerve gets shut down, we refer to this side, um, that sympathetic side as the gas pedal. We find that 90% of more of kids have had their brain and nervous system stuck in this way from the very beginning of life. Having developed during a stressful and highly emotional pregnancy, then birth interventions or even trauma such as forceps, vacuum, induction, or emergency C-section births, and then went through early childhood challenges like colic, recurrent ear infections, frequent tantrums and meltdowns, difficulty sleeping, so forth. This also means that their parasympathetic or their brake pedal, which is really run by the vagus nerve, is shut down and suppressed and can't activate and do its job when the brain and nervous system really need, to, need it to. These two systems can't work at the same time. So you can't have the brake pedal on while the gas is on as well. We all know driving, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in the body either. Here's the last point. They do not grow out of it. All of those stressors and interventions during pregnancy and delivery are termed normal by the medical system, as are the early childhood stressors that most pediatricians still believe children will grow out of. But that is simply not the case. As the research in neurology shows us, that instead many of these kids grow into neurological challenges later in life, like ADHD. So if your child is struggling big time right now as the school year turns into the holiday season and you do not want to medicate them or continue to just add higher dosages and different drugs, then learning more about neurologically focused chiropractic care that we provide at Generations Chiropractic is your best next step. 
We do not seek to treat or cure ADHD, but instead we tap into the incredible potential of your child's nervous system and seek to make neurologically focused adjustments that activate that brake pedal side of their brain and nervous system, helping finally turn down and shut off that constantly stuck on sympathetic fight or flight gas pedal that we've been talking about in this video. To learn more about drug-free options for ADHD and how to care how our care protocols work, please click the link below or in our bio to read the full in-depth article about ADHD, what really causes it, and what drug-free options are out there to help.